You know, I met Mike Dean, I think, at uh, uh, Digital Studio, a uh, studio in Houston, and he came in to uh, play an uh, instrument, you know, I think a guitar or something, because I think he's a part of a band, and he played, you know, instruments. And, you know, I started using him a little often, and I placed him on the Beto, the producer Beto. That's who really taught Mike Dean how to produce. You know what I mean? Mike Dean studied him, and I watched Mike Dean evolve. I watched how fast, how quick his mind was with different things, and he had a, a relentless work ethic. So I was the same way. You know what I mean? My work ethic was crazy, you know, two and three days, uh, you know, no sleep. And Mike Dean was one of the only ones who would stay woke with me after I put everybody else to sleep. So that was attractive. And what I'd done was I started placing Mike Dean under every producer that we'd done work with, even up to Dr. Dre, you know what I mean? Because uh, it was a sound that Dre had when he when he put his wax on in the club, and I put my wax on in the club, I'm like, why is this so much louder than ours? So I would talk to Mike Dean about that all the time. So when Scarface, you know, done a song, I forgot the name of the song, when we came out here and Dre done, you know, some production with Scarface, I sent Mike Dean with a message. I said, man, I want you to watch everything this man doing. I said, I want you to come back with this secret. <laughs> I want my wax to sound like that. that. That means something in the club. And Mike Dean came back with the formula and our sound was different from Dean Ford. And that's, that's who Mike Dean is, you know what I mean? He's, he's a guy, if you let him sit around you, or if he go around the money, he gonna figure out how to leave you some of the money. <laughs>